Hi everyone. So today I plan to film a Q&A video and I'm in the middle of a paint project. I'm actually painting our interior doors, spray painting them on the outside uh, for the cottages and I'm waiting on the one side to dry and I thought I'd come up here and quickly shoot this Q&A and then go back down and paint the other side. Um, I picked quite the day weather-wise to do painting again. I'm not sure why I always do this, but it's really humid out here. My hair always get kind of wild in weather like this, and it's just really sticky, and there was even a few sprinkles going on a bit ago. So I'm not sure what the weather's going to do, but thankfully my doors are all underneath roofs right now drying, so they should be okay. But let's get right into the questions. Uh, MB got these together for me again, uh, the previous, I think, four videos. And I know I'm going to have a lighting issue with the sun coming out and then disappearing again. And I should just put it on auto mode of the camera, but I don't like using that mode because it shoots darker. I always like to shoot a little bit lighter than what the auto mode wants to do, but we'll give it a shot here. Hopefully I don't fade out too much, but uh, the first questions are from last month's Q&A video. Uh, Janet Carter has numerous questions here. The first one is... Uh, not really a question, but I'd paint the lower portion of your home with wh with whitewash or white, definitely. I agree with that. We had talked about that before, uh, painting the brick on our house. Uh, kind of scary for me, but definitely want to eventually do something with it. And I think white or whitewash would look okay. Um, I also had some of you saying maybe a charcoal or a dark gray color. I think that could almost work too, but I'm just, yeah, it's kind of scary going that route. Um, I think with white I should be okay, but I'll still have to think about it before I just do it. Uh, she's also asking, I would love to hear how to open an, an, and operate an Etsy shop. And I love your she shed. Did you cut the walls and install windows or was it built that way? I have a shed that I'd like to transform, but it needs more windows. And one more, when do you get to sleep? Or when do you go to sleep? I'm curious how many hours of sleep you aim to get each night. Well, first of all, the Etsy shop. Um, I should just have a video sometime on some maybe Etsy shop tips, not that I just know everything about it, but I'd probably advise you in the meantime, just search on YouTube if you have any questions about Etsy. There's so many, so much advice out there on how to start a shop, like that's how I learned, and I feel there's people better equipped out there to give you guys advice than myself, but um, I will think about that, maybe eventually I'll get around to making a video like that. And then as far as the shed, I also love the windows here in the shed. And I had mentioned this before, but we built this from scratch uh, years ago. We were still Amish at the time, so no video footage or anything. But um, John just made the walls, and then of course he created the openings in the walls to fit, or so the windows would fit in. And again, I love old windows like this, so I was really impressed that he went along with it to even use old windows. But I'm sure you could always do that in your shed. Just cut out your openings bigger or just extra openings to, you know, add more windows. You would, of course, have to, you know, reinforce them with 2 by 4s uh, kind of frame them in, but that would definitely be possible. And then getting sleep, I don't get enough sleep, I'll admit. I wish I'd get, you know, 8 hours at least every night, but I probably get more like 6 or 7. Um, I'm a night owl, so often I'm up late. My own fault, I should go to bed earlier or get, you know, go to sleep earlier. And then right now, these days, I normally get up around 6.30 to 7. Uh, my mental clock or whatever you call that is kind of geared to I wake up kind of with the birds or as it gets daylight and I noticed that the last mornings it's a little later than usual which kind of saddens me I love the long you know summer days and we still have those but I noticed it changing just a bit and then during the winter of course with my son going to school I have to get up earlier so I always think well during the summer I'm going to take that break I don't really have to get up you know a certain time so I just kind of let myself sleep until I'm ready to get up. Uh, Michelle Davis says, just curious, Mary, do you lighten your hair? If so, what do you use? Um, I do, actually. I started maybe 10 years ago or so. Of course, you know, all the years I was Amish, I didn't do anything with them. And I always rather like the color, or better, like the color that they were during the summer. I would get natural highlights. And in fact, the way they are right now is probably my natural summer look. And I always wanted to kind of have that look year round. I just felt I kind of liked that better than my normal kind of dirty blonde look. So that's kind of why I started getting highlights. And with anything, if you start doing it, you it's kind of hard to go back to you're just not doing it. And I don't do it very often, probably maybe three times a year. And I have a girl, the same girl always does them for me. She does a good job. 
Her name's Allie, and she uses really good products. And in saying that, I also know it's still a chemical, but it kind of eases my mind a bit to know that it's probably, you know, maybe a better product than some of your others would be. But again, I don't like to, I try not to do it often, and I mostly just do it now for, I kind of like the highlights, and then also it gives my hair body. I kind of like that too. Uh, Stacy is asking what kind of mic I use. Um, I have this little mic, it's called Kima Fun is the brand. I'm not sure am I pronouncing that correctly, but I'll try to leave the link down below in the description box. Um, it's from Amazon. I think I paid maybe $40 to $50 for it. So not super expensive and not just super cheap. Uh, I think it's kind of right there in the middle. And it is cordless, like I have one, this is the, the end of course that I have with me with the wire and then the little mic here. I usually clip this on the top of my skirt or if I'm just sitting here, I'll just lay it on the table in front of me. And the other piece of course is plugged into the camera. You can't see that, but so far it's worked out quite well for me. I've debated already to get one that you actually attach on the top of your camera so you wouldn't have to be wearing anything. Supposedly that would pick up your sound better, but I've just not gotten around to it, and I guess if this works, you know why get another one. Lori G says, Mary, what do your sons do, college or work? Uh, well, the youngest one, Ephraim, is still in school. He'll be a sophomore coming up here soon. And the oldest one, Kenny, is he works uh, for our neighbor. He does some work here at home on the computer, like online stuff, and then some days he's out on deliveries. So that's kind of what he chose, you know, not to do college. He just, you know, got a job around here. And it's kind of that way. We have so many job opportunities around here. Uh, I realize, you know, some jobs you definitely want to go to college for, but um, there's just lots of opportunities around here. You can kind of get away with um, not, you know, having that uh, college education. Uh, Cindy Redding says, what does your sister sell on Etsy? Um, she actually has two Etsy shops, but presently her plant shop, Greenleaf Gardens, is closed. She doesn't have any it might be open to you might be able to view it but she doesn't have any plants on there to sell presently but she is planning on having a plant sale this fall in case you're local here and want to uh, keep an eye out for that uh, just follow her on instagram or facebook i'm sure she'll post on there and when it's going to be she has some really beautiful and unique plants so you might want to check that out if you're looking to do some gardening and i'll make sure to have all her links down below in the description box and then as far as her second shop it's her art shop uh, she has some beautiful things on there too so make sure to check that out and like i often do i'll address some of the bottom comments somehow the negative ones always kind of end up at the bottom not always but often and i'm not addressing them to start something some controversy or anything but uh, just to sometimes it's constructive criticism and i sometimes like to see a negative side to something i'm just that way i guess it doesn't bother me and i don't need to be defended about it but it's just interesting to me to sometimes see what people post and again they're not all negative but they tend to be uh, this one is not really i don't think i had kind of skimmed over some of these but crafty girl 46 says my goodness why do people have to be so nosy I understand questions about her garden, different meals, DIYs, but what her husband wears? Come on, folks, get a life. Uh, I kind of smiled when I read that the first time, but um, I'm trying to think what the question was. I think somebody commented that John was maybe a little underdressed when we went out to eat, which he actually was, but it was kind of my choice. I wanted to see him in a black t-shirt. Um, and as far as answering any questions, I don't mind and I won't answer questions that I don't want to answer, like I'm not forced to answer these. And if I'm honest, I sometimes don't know why people want to know certain things because I feel like I'm not really an exciting, I'm kind of relatively boring actually. But then I think of some YouTubers that I watch and I'm always kind of interested in some of their personal things too. So I kind of get that, that you sometimes want to know more about someone than just what they're putting out there. Not in a nosy way even, but just uh, you're curious and interested. I think there's nothing wrong with that. And again, you know, sometimes questions are just not necessary at all. And I won't address those. Like it's just the ones that I think, oh, maybe it is interesting to someone to know you know certain things and it's, even if it's not to me like it might be to, to other people so that's kind of why I even do Q&A's and then of course to try my best to answer some you know paint related DIY type questions too of course. Uh, the next questions are from the buffet makeover video and the first one here is and I see my battery light is blinking again I just feel like my batteries are always dead on my camera so I'm sure in an instant I'll be off here soon but 
I'll just let it go until it happens. Um, Annie Bailey says, have you ever tried using spackling or compound paste to fill in the missing veneer when sanding it smooth? It works well if you paint the furniture, not so much with staining. I think in the past I have tried that and have used it and it does work. I know I used something called maybe plastic wood or something like that. Something that got super hard where I was able to fill in, it was soft, you know, out of the container, fill in the cracks or patch it up or whatever, uh, allow it to harden and then sand it down. But often, you know, it's kind of hard with depending on how the surface is, especially to get that just looking, blending in and just looking nice and smooth. And I agree, you'd have to definitely paint it if you'd go that route. I have tried that in the past, just not recently. I also got a tip from um, Esther from a lady from church. Uh, she recently told me, and I may have mentioned this before, but if you want to just remove the veneer, let's say that would actually be easier to kind of pretty up a piece to just remove the veneer and everything. Uh, just use a hair dryer. I haven't really tried it so far. Maybe I tried it once just on a small area, but uh, just heat up your section that you want to remove. Uh, probably a slow process, I imagine, but I think it would work. I mean, it makes sense. Just heat it up and then your veneer will peel right off. Like what it does is just melt uh, the glue that's underneath. Uh, just use a hair dryer to you know heat it up and uh, just remove it all together so that would work too. Next question here is Bella saying, I was happy to see you painting furniture again. That's why I started watching your channel and even though I like everything else, this is still the real White Cottage Company for me. I agree and it's probably still my favorite thing to do is just paint something or uh, redo something, makeovers, repurpose, all that sort of thing. But often, we've gotten really carried away with the cottages and you know when things sometimes tend to get too busy I just have to kind of use what I'm doing at the moment even if I'd rather go out in the shop and actually you know make things or repurpose things but I really enjoyed redoing that buffet uh, have you ever been to Berlin Germany or thought about going I have thought about it we've even talked about how interesting that would be to go over to you know Switzerland and Germany where our ancestors come from uh, take a vacation sometime and just explore that area. I think it would be really interesting. I've heard people say, and I've seen pictures of that area, and they say it actually kind of looks like Holmes County does. So I think that's probably why our ancestors were maybe drawn to this area and might have reminded them of home kind of the rolling hills and the farmland and just beautiful. Uh, Linda Pfeiffer says, beautiful as always, thank you. I'm curious how long you let a piece dry outside. I've found my outside items feel tacky for a long time due to the humidity. I can't really say that I deal with that. I mean, I've, again, today it's really humid and I think my doors are drying nice and dry, like to the touch, I don't think they're tacky. So I'm not sure, uh, is it the paint you're using? Uh, Water-based paint usually dries fairly dry and not sticky. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, of course I don't know what, what you use, but I definitely shy away from oil-based paint because that will definitely dry more tacky. And as far as how long I let a piece dry, I mean often, sometimes by the time I'm on the other end, you know, spray painting, my first end is dry already, like it dries that quick on the outside. And maybe it's the climate too. I mean, we do have humidity too, but maybe you have more. And I'm not one to follow rules on the paint can where it says, you know, let allow something to dry, you know, three to four hours. Goodness, you'd never get anything done. <laughs> I just repaint it. Like, let's say something needs, you know, two coats. I just apply that second coat as soon as it feels dry to the touch. And that's always worked. I'm gonna adjust my lighting just a bit here. Okay, hopefully that's better. I can't believe this battery is still going. Uh, Jen says the buffet looks beautiful. Do you ever finish the interiors of furniture you paint, like inside the doors, drawers, sides, etc.? I do sometimes. I didn't that piece, but I thought it kind of looked nice inside. Uh, it wasn't smelly or anything. And how do you manage to not get paint on yourself? I actually get asked that a lot, and I, I'm not sure why, besides maybe just the fact that I paint a lot, and I I don't even really like to talk about it because I'm afraid I'll jinx it. You know, next time just dump a whole gallon all over the place. But um, actually just today when I was painting, I set my sprayer down and my cap wasn't on like tight to, on the container. And it the sprayer fell over and the cap fell off and the paint poured all over my sheet. So I guess I did have a little mess today to clean up. I ran inside and grabbed a, a spoon to try to save some of my paint and manage to get most of it, thankfully. Uh, Cheryl says, could you put the buffet in a bedroom? I actually debated that because I liked the piece enough that I thought could it kind of serve as a dresser, but I wonder what you guys think. Um, I feel it's also a little big for the bedrooms. They're not, the bedrooms aren't very large, like there's not a lot of space in there, so it might be almost too big for that space too, but 
hopefully I'll find a good home for it. And if nothing else, I'll probably just put it in the antique mall and, you know, just sell it there. Now, uh, the bottom comment from that video is Suzanne Reed saying, lost me at the black. <laughs> I guess she does not care for black, which I understand that. I don't like every furniture color either. I do feel gray, white, black, you know, off-white, all those are really neutral colors. I can usually kind of put up with those, I guess. Uh, the next questions are from the cottage update and then the flooring that I show you guys, the bedroom floors that I whitewashed. It's funny, just as we're talking about a cottage update here, John sends me a picture of the tub, like the bathtub is now in the opening. Um, it's been sitting out for a while and I couldn't wait to see it in the opening, like everything's tiled in the little wet room that, we're, that the tub is to be put in and it looks awesome. Maybe I'll try to put this picture on the screen here as I'm talking about it. Um, Erica is asking, I think she has one question towards the end here, Oh, why I did not use my kneeling pad, like my rubber kneeling pad, when I was putting the clear uh, coat on the floors. It was the, the polycrylic. I think I didn't use it then. Well, first of all, this shouldn't be confusing, but for some reason, building two cottages at the same time, sometimes I'm not sure which cottage I'm in. Like, I lose all my things all the time. And I think, well, I just placed it here, and then it's actually in the other cottage at that same area. Like, they look exactly the same on the inside, like the layout. So I may even just not have had it with me in that cottage at the time, and then maybe just not taking the time to run over and get it. But I think with the clear coat, it actually did not take me long. So my battery did end up dying on me there, but we have a fresh one, so we, we're good. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, about the kneeling pad, I think I probably just didn't take the time to run over and get it. And with applying that polycrylic, I know that was, you know, it, it didn't take as long to apply that. So I probably almost moved too fast to make it worth it to kind of drag a kneeling pad along. Uh, I know I probably should have to been, you know, to take care of my knees, but... Uh, I just kind of skipped on doing that. Uh, Leanne Kay says, are you sharing the coffee cake recipe? Um, it looked so delicious. Well, thank you. It was quite good, actually. It's pretty sweet, but it's, it's good. It's mom's recipe, and I will make sure to eventually, if I do a food video, I have one coming up soon here that is already edited, so I can't add it to that, but I'll definitely be making those coffee cakes again, and I'll try to film them and then include them in my description box, the recipe, because I'm pretty sure you guys would enjoy that. Uh, Brenda70 says, I love the sink. I think it's interesting your dream countertops are in your cottages, not your home. It would have also been difficult for me to not find a way to use the sink in my home. Is it a struggle to choose what goes in the cottages without putting it in your own home? I love your home. I think it's very comfortable and homey. Just wondered. I'm sure income from the cottages will one day provide dream countertops. Let's hope. I hope to contribute. Oh, well, thank you. That sounds good. Uh, would you ever build a new house for yourself? Well, first of all, getting back to the, you know, choosing my dream countertops for the cottages and then also using that sink in the cottages. I don't have any, I don't hesitate with that. For some reason, the cottages are almost like a part of me or kind of almost like home to me. I don't know. Is it just I enjoy being over there and just kind of you know, I dreamed so long of having something like that. I just, I don't, it doesn't bother me that it's over there and not here. Uh, Cause I wasn't at the time, you know, I'm not sure where I'd ever put that sink. Although uh, I guess if I'd ever want one, I'd just probably try to pick one up elsewhere. But it is special being that John, you know, carried it out of the woods for me. Uh, and then as far as the countertop, yeah, definitely hope to have countertops like that someday in our home. Right now, our countertops are just horrible looking. I'm sure you guys see it in the videos, but uh, those are just wooden countertops that I made myself, just went into our shop and used uh, treated lumber and just kind of glued the pieces together and painted them to kind of look like a marble top. Some of the paint is peeling off and definitely in need of being replaced, but hopefully soon. When I say soon, maybe hopefully within the next couple of years. And then as far as would you ever build a new home for yourself, uh, we never talk about that. Well, like we love it here. I can't imagine, you know, building and moving elsewhere, but I guess the only thing would be if, heaven forbid, something would happen to our home and we'd actually have to rebuild. Or uh, the other thing is this would not be rebuilding, but I'd love to do a major remodel someday, someday on our home. Um, maybe that will happen sometime, but for now we'll just leave it the, the way it is. Uh, Hollyhock11 says, everything will come together with all the talent and ideas all of you have designed. Well, thank you. Can't wait to see your cottages and landscape completed. By the way, what did you name your cottages? And I thought when I posted that update, 
here I never even mentioned the cottage names. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this is what I'm going with now. I know I had talked about it earlier this year. I had even gotten some ideas from you guys. And it was funny, some of the ideas, some of the top comments in that video, like they got more likes. And I assume that was because people liked the names that were suggested. Um, those were kind of the names we had talked about too. Um, Apple Blossom, for example. That was one that my dad like rarely ever mentions, you know, a name like that wouldn't be his thing to name something. But that was something that he mentioned. Like if you have, you know, if you're if you're going with old orchard cottages, you should name one maybe Apple Blossom. So we might actually do that for the what we call Cottage Two. We have these Cottage One and Cottage Two names for them right now. But I think one is going to be Apple Blossom, and then Cottage One, that first one on the right, is probably going to be Sparrow's Nest. I really like that too. I think it really fits to the orchard theme, and there are so many song sparrows that you hear singing up there. I think it would be really fitting. I feel like this video is too dark. I'm going to adjust my lighting once more. There we go, I think that's better. Uh, Sue Wilson says, when I watch you lug and lift heavy items, and especially when you did the white flooring, I think you're very strong, or do you sometimes hurt your back? Um, so far, I haven't had major issues. Like, I have some back. I actually see a chiropractor once a month. I think that really helps to keep me aligned and you know adjusted. But um, I know I probably should take care more than I do with, uh, I'm just an impatient person. Like often when I want to move something, I don't want to wait on someone to help me. I just rather do it myself, I guess. So I guess I'm used to it. Uh, the next question here is, will you be utilizing the roofs and putting solar panels on them? Uh, no, we're not planning on having any solar uh, power over there. A good idea though, because we have plenty of sunshine, you'd think you could probably do that. But for now, we'll just stick to the electric. Uh, the next question here, or possibly just a comment, she stuck in here. Uh, Susie Stuck says, Hi Mary, I live in Sandusky, Ohio. My husband and I went to Amish country today. We hit a detour and ended up out in the country. As we were driving along, I spotted your cottages up on the hill. I yelled, those are Mary's cottages. I about gave my husband a heart attack. We turned around and went back for a better look. Simply charming. Also picked up a White Cottage Company t-shirt at the Peddler. I just thought I should share. Well, thanks for sharing that. And yes, we do have people that are starting to discover them, you know, just maybe driving past and they notice them up there on the hill. And then as far as visiting the peddler and buying a shirt, uh, thanks for that. Um, I don't, I'm not in partnership with them anymore, so I don't even know what all is going on there. But I do know that um, I will eventually probably move whatever they have left over from the merchandise. I'll probably move that to our place and sell it out of the Etsy shop and that should happen here in the next uh, couple of weeks hopefully. The bottom comment from that video is Lee Friedman saying big mistake with the whitewash floors they will age badly too much white and also the roof should have been red or gray. Um, that would have been cute. I even liked the at one point the siding was green which it wasn't the siding it was just the insulation that was underneath or the paper and I actually kind of like that little green cottages but of course we need to go with white cottage you know and then the roofs are actually light gray they aren't completely white uh, almost like a silvery gray um, depending on what, how the lighting is they kind of look different but um, I don't think I would have chosen red I don't think that would fit to my theme but they are yeah light gray and then as far as the whitewash floors uh, most of the floors are going to be covered I guess I spent all that time painting it and then you know once you put a king size bed in there and probably another little piece of furniture and maybe a rug uh, most of them will probably be covered so that should protect them too uh, the last questions are from the herb garden video um, Amy says would spraying the weed killer to mark your garden also kill the herbs when you plant them absolutely not I would not have used that if that would have happened but you need to get that a cleanup is the product that I use but that needs to touch actually touch your you know weeds or grass and it will travel to the root but I you know waited long enough so there was no worry about that as far as you know killing my herbs. Uh, Kim G says I have a question how do you stay so clean? I just worked in my flower garden and I had dirt all over me and my hair, my face, my clothes and had granny beads around my neck, a necklace of dirt uh, not to mention I sweat like a pig. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's pretty hot in your area, which we've had really hot weather this summer too. Uh, spells where it was hotter. I mean, it, like today it's not, it's humid, but it's not really just unbearably hot. 
Uh, but I do, you know, sweat some too, and I do get dirt on myself. You might just not see it in the videos. Lori Berry says, I'm curious about how it is that the bunnies and the deer don't bother your plantings. They eat my hostas and lilies and impatiens and even my geraniums. That would be such a bummer. Like, I hear that a lot. Uh, we don't have issues with that. I don't know, is it because we have, you know, miles of, you know, woods around us, and they kind of have enough out there that they kind of leave our things be. But again, probably just have to say that, knock on wood here, but so far we haven't really had issues with that. Maybe every now and then, probably chipmunks mostly will dig up a bulb or something. And I felt like one year I did have a deer that came and chewed down some of my tulips, like in the early spring. And that was probably because they didn't have, you know, enough to, to eat out in the woods at that point. But as a whole, they don't really bother us, thankfully. Uh, Georgia Smith says, do all of these herbs come back every year? Um, they don't. I should have probably specified that when I planted them. Most of the ones that I planted will come back next year. Uh, some are borderline. I know like parsley sometimes will survive our winters. And I want to say basil and what's the other one? Oregano might not. And then I know like sage and chives and thyme that will survive our winters. Uh, a lavender usually does, although lavender is really hard to grow here in our climate. I've had so many issues with lavender dying for me. Um, it seems once it's going, it'll stay, you know, healthy, but I'm just crossing my fingers, those few plants that are still living will continue living. Uh, Mary Carper says, did you get blisters on your hands from all the shoveling? Um, I didn't, that I know. I don't think I did. I have some calluses on my hands that probably help, but... Um, it probably looked like more shoveling in the video than it, what it actually was. I don't feel like I just overdid myself in shoveling by any means. The bottom comment from that video is Gwen B saying, This one disappointed me a little. Too much like GA, speeding through the actual planting instead of playing it with editing and enjoying it. Uh, GA, Garden Answer, she's actually, Laura, is one that I watch probably more than any other YouTuber. Um, I have a few of them that I watch all the time but right now with summertime I notice I don't watch as much YouTube it's more you know a winter thing but then I'll have a backup of you know some to watch that I didn't get watched here during the summer during this busy time but as far as speeding through the actual planting um, I don't know I guess I should have slowed things down I often think like I'm always afraid when I'm editing like I don't want it to be boring I guess that's why I speed through the you know some of the processes but I, I should really just stop and think you know some people might actually want to see the real time I'll keep that in mind definitely so that's it for today's questions uh, thanks for hanging out with me here in my little shed and I do have a grapefruit and mint candle burning in front of me here and this candle is one that I have used in outdoor parties already, and I'm just amazed. I feel like it keeps bugs at bay. I don't know, is it the grapefruit or the mint or both, but it just seems when I burn these candles, when there's, you know, food around, um, I don't have as many, you know, bugs and flies and bees or whatever is flying around. So if you're thinking of doing some outdoor dining and you want it to be bug-free, check out the grapefruit and mint candles on my Etsy shop. And speaking of candles, we are planning on having a whole new fresh start to candles. We're gonna do some different labeling. I'm pretty excited about it, but I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. That should happen here uh, later this summer, hopefully. There's a lot of work involved when you know changing labels, but I'm, I'm excited about it. So enough on that. Uh, thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going great, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.